A good morning to everyone. We are coming to you live from Digital Address GA0992539 in Kokomimli Accra. On DSTV, we are on channel 421 and Go TV channel 144. The show is Joy News Interactive. And our social media handles for Facebook, Twitter and Instagram is Joy News on TV. My name is Selinam Ampo. Now, the two Canadian ladies who were reportedly kidnapped last week in Kumase, the Ashanti region capital, have been rescued. Lauren Patricia Catherine Tilly, 19, and Bailey Jordan Shitlit, who is 20, were rescued last night by the police in Sawaba, a suburb of Kumase. It's good news, and yes, we are all glad that they were found, but where are our Takrade missing girls? That's what most Ghanaians on social media asking let's hop on to social media first let me show you the trend list um on our garnish trend list we have canadians um at the top um, bring back our tidy girls is also trending ghana kumase and canada are trending on garnish twitter trend list now let's hop on to facebook to find out what people had to say about this and we have Adrina Dawson, who says, good work, Dan. God bless you all. And Atanga Isaac is asking, why the Takradic girls are still not found? God help Ghana. And Peter Doe says, Canadian security agency came and rescued their own. And Ghanaian police tried to take the credit for it. Oh, CID boss Tiwa Adodankwa and Ghana Police Service. Please rescue the Takrade kidnapped girls with the same magic. And Getrude Fosu says, if foreigners can be rescued, why can't our own nationals be rescued? God help us all. Alberta says, dear Ghana police, find our three tardy girls. Thank you. Hashtag Ghanaian lives matter too. And Henrietta Pia says, please, can the Canadian security experts who came to help Ghana national security to rescue the two Canadian ladies, please stay to help us find our missing Takrade girls, please. Kinsford Quist says, I hope the Ghana police service have learned something from those Canadian investigators that they did work with. The Ghana and Ghana as a whole must have also learned something from them. At least they've thought as a great lesson on how to protect and care for our fellow citizens. Ebenezer Ayensu says, what is that? We can't rescue our own. Oh, I'm a Ghana. And Ella Godslav says, this is complete bladderdash. Um, how come our girls have not been rescued yet, but it took you a few weeks to save others? Not to say those lives are less important, but then I just can't understand what is going on. Ghana has a weak security system where security personnel will rather sacrifice themselves for other nationals than their own. I'm not proud. I pray our tardy girls are found soon. I know the situation is totally depressing for their families. But let's find out what people had to say on the same topic um, from Twitter. And on Twitter, we have Kapo who is tweeting, so we found the kidnapped Gan Canadian ladies before the Takrade girls this country. And Hadi Yakubu says, the swift rescue of the Canadian girls is a manifestation of something deeper. Some Africans like to treat white people or anything relating to them preferentially. So, And Jerry Neal Lyre says, we all know that the Canadian investigators did the job, not Ghana police. Yeah. And Volta James Bond says, that's the weakness in our institutions, especially the security agencies. I believe if not for the help of the Canadian security, they will still not be found. 
Is it too much to ask for international help? Ghana beyond aid. Hashtag bring back our tardy girls. And Walter James Bond is tweeting again. He says, I'm happy but shocked to hear the Canadian girls have been found just a few days after security experts from Canada came to assist. They were found in the same Kumasi where the Ghana Police Service has been gathering their intelligence. Hashtag bring back our tidy girls. Hashtag the police mass sit up. And Mr. Dumelo, John Dumelo, he's tweeting. He said, can the Canadians who came to rescue the kidnapped Can Canadian citizens please stay on for like a week more and help us find our missing Takrade girls? I will pay for accommodation, I beg. Eric God is tweeting. He said, Canadian girls found tidy girls still missing. CID boss who said she has found the tidy girls still at post. Welcome to Ghana. And bring back Tardy Girls says that they have rescued the kidnapped or abducted Canadians. We thank governments of Ghana. And the realist board says Canadian experts arrive in Ghana and barely 24 hours later, Ghana police rescues the kidnapped Canadians in Kumasi. Um, I smell a rat. Well, kudos to the Canadian investigators and the Ghana police for finding the girls. But let's move away from that topic and speak about social media and mental health. Do you get anxious when you cannot access your social media account? Or do you feel like you ha having more and more in personal relations because you are always on social media? Believe it or not, social media usage, according to a report by a non-governmental organization, Child Online Africa, is set to adversely affect our mental health. The report issued by the organization has estimated that 5.6 million active social media users in Ghana are at a risk of suffering various degrees of mental disorders as a result of reduced social interactions. Well, we spoke to some Ghanaians on the streets just to find out how is social media affecting you or how is it helping you? At times, it's the attention when people are in the midst of uh, um, a lot of people they don't feel at ease, so or they find it difficult to communicate with other people. So or at times they because they are shy, so they try to uh, uh, chat, then release stress. Yeah, it's helping people in so many ways, in buying and selling, knowing other people. But the fact that people concentrate a lot more on social media, it's not really a good idea because sometimes. Real people also matter because you need to go through somebody before you have to do certain things. So I think sometimes some people feel very comfortable with people on their phone more than the people outside. Because sometimes we only plan on feeling feeling. I'm very shy. No, no, I don't think it's good. Because when you go for a social program, you're supposed to interact with the people there, get to know, like share ideas and stuff like that. So when you're on your phone, how would you pay attention to what the people are like? what they are saying so I don't think it's a good thing and people have to socialize it's one of the good things that comes to us yeah so. it's not everyone that is an introvert we have extroverts and we have introverts me for instance I'm an extrovert and then introverts are those who don't like to socialize outside but they like to chat so you creating a forum or a platform on social media, chatting with that person is far better than you meeting one-on-one. -on -one. Because if I meet you one-on-one, -on -one, maybe I would feel shy in talking to you. But with a platform, you drop everything there. You wouldn't see my face, how I'm feeling, or whether I like what you said or not. So that one is best than speaking to you face to face. Um, social media is, is important, no matter what uh, the negatives have. Uh, it's, it's come to make information faster, that sharing and then receiving. The only problem is uh, people don't tend to bond well uh, from not talking to each other when they go for parties, couples not really concentrating on each other just because uh, the social media has come in and they have to talk to other people, WhatsApp, Facebook. So it's one of those things. It has its positives and negatives, but I think the negatives are more. Uh, there's nothing that can be done actually. We are in a new world. This is convergent media. So we are adding all the new things. And obviously, we can't go back to the old traditional media, so. 
or you heard Ghanaians right there talking about social media usage and how it probably affects their mental health or not. Well, we are joined by Awo Amenga. She is the Executive Director of Child Online Africa. Hello, Awo. How are you doing? Hi, I'm well, thank you. Um, okay. So and let's, good afternoon to your viewers. Yes. Um, let's dive straight into the topic, mental health and social media. How does mental health, when you say mental health is, um, social media is affecting mental health, what do you mean? Um, thank you again uh, for the opportunity. Uh, as an organization that works to promote uh, mm -hmm. safety and well-being of uh, young people, we're looking at this week as a, a day to join the world to raise awareness on mental health and social media usage because you agree with me that people post status on social media with a view to receiving support. But most people on the other side misconstrue that to mean that they're seeking attention. Mm. And when that happens, the person who posts the status feels bad in the end. And the fundamental cause of mental illness in general has to do with depression has to do with isolation has to do with boredom and all those other things so once we are triggering those basic fundamental communication breaches there's a high possibility of us suffering in the end so one day we are there we hear of a suicide situation we don't know how it started or we've lost track of how we started the conversation yeah. but we are of the view that this week being the week of change, which is going with the hashtag change direction, it's important we make the conversation on mental health a bit more normal. Okay. Whereby when you see somebody, the person is not dressing properly from the previous way the person used to dress, and you ask the person, how are you? The person should not say, I'm fine. But the person should say, oh, I'm depressed, oh, I'm sad because of this and that. Because we seem to divert attention. When you see someone, the person doesn't look well. You ask, how are you? The person says, I'm fine. That's a wrong way to respond to things. Yeah. And it's the same way we do on social media. You are not feeling well. You've written a status. Hmm. And someone responds, oh, is everything all right? We hide and behind the scene and says, yes, everything is fine. When there are people around who could place a call and actually interrogate what the situation is. So we feel that being people who work in the space and seek the well-being of people, young people especially in the space, it's important we raise awareness on the need for us to talk freely about mental health because each of us has a potential of being freaked out one day or the other okay when when you say mental health and social media usage is this varied um or or based on age difference um the of course it's it's based on age difference because again the potential of a young person to withstand pressure for okay. instance bullying online is lower compared to an adult withstanding pressure in a digital space mm. so so long as that disparity or that variation is there, there's a high possibility of young people suffering much of their depressive situations yeah. and isolating themselves, resulting in danger compared to adults. But mm. mind you, adults also suffer the same way. How do we get um, Ghanaians to embrace the topic of mental health since it's um, a very shunned or ignored topic, in our, not only in our media space, but in our lives? How do we get Ghanaians to embrace it? Yeah, uh, that is why we decided this week is the first time globally uh, this organization called uh, Give an mm -hmm. is organizing this campaign to raise awareness on mental illnesses. And the conversation is going on on social media to promote the five signs of mental health, which is to say that when you see someone whose personality has changed, you approach the person, you reach out and give a helping hand. If you see someone who looks a bit agitated, don't just pay attention to what the person says, go beyond that. 
and get the person okay. into a conversation. There are people who withdraw. Someone is very hearty all the time posting status. For like a week or two, the person ceases to post something. We should be concerned and ask, oh, what is happening to you? There are people who, who show helplessness online. How do we reach out to them in order to help them safeguard the conversation? So even though we don't do mental health situation mainstream as our focus, well-being is part of our conversation. So we thought it wise that this is an opportunity to raise awareness yes. on the issues of mental illnesses and then get the conversation going. So we have some of the flyers that we've designed to make this conversation a lot more friendly that we'll be letting out in social media for people to, to, to get to understand the issues. Okay. Thank you very much, Awo, for that enlightenment. I'm sure very soon most people will jump on the campaign as well to fight. If your friend is down and sad and hasn't posted something for weeks, do check up on that person because mental health is important. Let's take a short break and we'll be back with more stories.